here at the Knutson property at Elk Meadows, right outside Cherokee Park, Colorado. We are treating these ponderosa pines to prevent beetle kill. Looking at uh, the different spots of, that are infected with a beetle. There you go. So we're going to put 10 milliliters of ODC into this 50 gallon tank. And we have two eminent scientists carefully measuring and taking care of this. There we go. And that says five milliliters on that spoon. One tablespoon. Figure it'll get mixed, right? Yeah, it'll, it'll be circulated. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, that's this pump will. Oh. And when it only pulls off the Rocky Mountain well water. Cooler water, this is one. So one minute equals five gallons. Right. Yeah, the five gallons and it's going to the base of the tree, you're just doing it under the under the drip line. Soaking into the ground as what is known as the drip line. Here we are at Gary Francis' homestead here in the Elk Meadow Range. Because I can't do anything about the dead ones or the infested ones. Right. If you look here, you can just see. This is all right behind us here, just going right up. How tall are these trees, do you think? 40 feet or? Yeah, probably about that, uh, and or taller. We'll take some close-ups of the beetle kill. Just really devastating. So, you've been working on cutting this tree down and- I did see some active beetles in it. So this one's probably been infested for more than one year. I see the, you know, the staining from the blue stain fungi. And that you have about, probably about two to three man hours into cleaning this up. Yeah, I mean, it certainly seems. Uh, Why don't you uh, tell me about the, uh, the sawdust on there and what that means to what you were telling me a little bit earlier. Well, uh, the beetle tries to chew its way into the bark as it's attacking it. It's attracted by the odors and terpenes and plus uh, various other cues dealing with light and shadows. As it chews into the bark, if the tree is healthy, it'll ooze out sap or resin. Mm -hmm. And a good healthy tree will trap the beetle and will get caught in the pitch out. And it won't be able to penetrate, but if you have a stress tree, a tree that's compromised. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the sawdust as the beetle chews its way into the yes, underneath the bark. That tree will ooze out some of the sawdust right. along with the resin. Well, how is a homeowner or, or property landowner going to know whether his tree is is healthy? By I mean, can he count the the bores into the tree, or is it going to be such that it's just going to be so much oozing that there's an indication that his tree is really infected. The more pitch outs you have on a tree like the one you videoed over there, the more likely you're going to have some of the beetles being successful on their entry. And if you just have a couple pitch outs, you know, that
tree has a fairly good chance. You can always look through the pitch out, and a lot of times, uh, if it's successful, you'll just see the beetle buried in that. Uh, Dr. Knudsen said that uh, if the tree is healthy enough that and even has some pitch out and, and beetles boring into it, if it's a healthy tree and it's elicited properly, that most likely you wouldn't see it suffering from uh, this uh, being killed by the, the fungi or the, the blue stain. Yeah, I really got to treat these trees. Right. So what we've done is marked with the tags uh, that they put ODC around that looking at right here. And Basically, I'm using a two-pronged or integrated uh, pest management approach. Sanitation, protection, to try and protect the healthy ones. I've, I've had trees right here, and that was fact, uh, you know, highly successful at uh, pitching out the uh, beetles and, and tying them up so they didn't actually enter.